you were at Microsoft, and at some point you realized that GitHub is very valuable and worth acquiring. How did you realize that, and how did you convince Microsoft to purchase GitHub? Well, so I had started a company called Xamarin together with uh, Miguel de Acasa and Joseph Hill, and uh, we had built kind of mobile tools and platforms, and uh, Microsoft acquired the company in 2016, and uh, I was excited about that, and I thought it was great, uh, but to be honest, I didn't actually expect or plan to spend, you know, more than a kind of a year or so there, but when I got in there, I got exposed to what Satya was doing, and just the quality of his leadership team. I was really impressed. And um, actually, I think I saw him in the first week or so I was there, and he asked me, what do you think we should do at, at Microsoft? And I said, well, I think we should buy GitHub. And he hey, said, when yeah. would this have been? This was like my first week. It was like April, March or April of uh, 2016. Okay. And then he said, um, yeah, it's a good idea. We thought about it. I'm not sure we can get away with it. Or something like that. <laughs> and then it was about a year later, a little more than a year later, yeah, I wrote, a, I wrote him an email, just a memo, you know, I sort of said, like, I think it's time to do this. There was some noise that Google was sniffing around. I think that may have been manufactured by the GitHub team. But it was a good catalyst because it was something I thought made a lot of sense for Microsoft to do anyway. And so I wrote an email to Satya, sort of a little memo saying, you know, hey, I think we should buy GitHub. Here's why. Here's what we should do with it. And the basic argument was developers are making... IT purchasing decisions now. It used to be the sort of IT thing, you know, and now developers are leading that purchase. And, and it's, you know, this, this sort of major shift in how software products are, are acquired. And Microsoft really was an IT company. It was not a developer company in, in the way most of its purchases were made. But it was founded as a developer company, right? And so, you know, the, Microsoft's first product was a programming language. Um, yeah, I said, look, the challenge that we have is, there's an entire new generation of developers who have no affinity with Microsoft, and the largest collection of them is at GitHub. And if we acquire this and we do a merely competent job of running it, we can earn the right to be considered by these developers for all the other products that we do. And to my surprise, Satya replied in like six or seven minutes and said, I think this is very good thinking. Let's meet next week or so and talk about it. And I ended up at this conference room with him and Amy Hood and Scott Guthrie and Kevin Scott and several other people. And uh, they said, okay, make, you know, tell us what you're thinking. And I kind of did a little 20 minute ramble on it. And Satya said, yeah, I think we should do it. And uh, why don't we run it independently like LinkedIn, Nat, you'll be the CEO. And he said, do you think we can get it for 2 billion? And I said, <laughs> well, we can try. <laughs> and uh, three weeks later, you know, he said, okay, go, go do this. Scott, you know, Scott will support you on this. Three weeks later, we had like a signed term sheet and an announced deal. Um, and then it was an amazing experience for me. I'd been there less than two years. And, you know, Microsoft was made up of and run by a lot of people who'd been there for many years. And they trusted me with this really big project and uh, made me feel really good, you know, to be trusted and empowered. And I had grown up in the open source world. And so for me to get an opportunity to run GitHub, it's like, I don't know, getting appointed mayor of your hometown or something like that. <laughs> I, it felt cool. Um, and I really wanted to do a good job for developers. And so that's, that's how it happened. That's actually uh, one of the things I want to ask you about because often when something succeeds, we kind of think it was inevitable that it would succeed. But at the time, I remember, I mean, I, I, it was like a while back, but I remember that there was a huge amount of skepticism. I would go on like Hacker News and like the top thing would be the blog post about how Microsoft's going to mess up GitHub. And I guess people are, have, those concerns have been alleviated throughout the years. But how did you... Get, you know, deal with that skepticism and deal with that distrust. Well, I was really paranoid about it. Yeah. And I really cared about what developers thought. I think there's always this question of who are you performing for? Like, who do you actually really care about? Sort of who's in, who's the audience that's in your head that you're trying to, you know, do a good job for, impress, earn the respect of, whatever it is. And though I love Microsoft and care a lot about Satya and the, everyone there, I really cared about the developers. You know, I'd, I'd grown up in this open source world. And so for me to do a bad job with this central institution and in open source would have been a devastating feeling for me. It was very important to me not to. So that was sort of the first thing is just that I cared. And then the second thing is that the deal leaked. It was going to be announced, I think, on a Monday. It leaked on a Friday. And uh, my, Microsoft's buying GitHub. And the, the whole weekend there were like terrible posts online, you know, people saying we got to evacuate GitHub as quickly as possible. And... And uh, we're like, oh, my God, this is terrible. And then Monday, we put the announcement out. And we said, we're acquiring GitHub. It's going to run as an independent company. 
And then it said, Nat, you know, Nat Friedman's going to be CEO. And, you know, I, I had, I don't want to overstate or whatever, like, but I think a couple of people were like, oh, Nat comes from open source. You know, he spent some time in open source, so you know, it's going to be run independently. So I don't think they were really that, that calmed down, but at least some, a few people thought like, oh, maybe I'll give this a few months and just see what happens before I migrate off. And then my first day as CEO, after we got the deal closed, like 9 a.m. the first day, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was in this room and we got on Zoom and all the heads of engineering and product. And I think maybe, I don't know what people were expecting, but I think maybe they were expecting some kind of longer term strategy or something. But I came in and I said, there was this uh, GitHub had no official feedback mechanism that was publicly available, but there was uh, several GitHub repos that community members had started. Isaac from NPM had started one uh, where he'd just been allowing people to give GitHub feedback, and people had been voting on this stuff for years. And I kind of shared my screen and put that up, sorted by votes, and said, like, we're going to pick one thing from this list and fix it by the end of the day and ship that, like, just one thing. And, I, you know, I think people were like, like this is the new CEO strategy? <laughs> like, and, you know, and they were like, I don't know, we can't, you know, you have to do database migrations, that can't do that in a day, and like, uh, and then someone's like, well, maybe we can do this, you know, we have this sort of, we actually have a half implementation of this, and uh, we eventually found something that we could fix by the end of the day, and what I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking, what I, I hope I said was, what we need to show the world is that GitHub cares about developers, mm -hmm. not that it cares about Microsoft. Like, if the first thing we did after the acquisition was to add Skype integration, developers would have said, oh, we're not your priority. Like, you have new priorities now. And so the idea was just to find ways to make it better for the people who use it and to have them see that we cared about that immediately. And so I said, we're going to do this today, and then we're going to do it every day for the next 100 days. And it was cool because I think it created some really good feedback loops, at least for me. One was you know, you ship things and then people are like, oh, hey, I've been wanting to see this fixed for years and now it's fixed. It's a relatively simple thing. So you get this sort of nice dopaminergic, you know, feedback loop going there. And then people in the team feel the, you know, excitement of shipping stuff. Um, I think GitHub was a company that had a little bit of stage fright about shipping previously and sort of break that static friction and, and ship a little bit more, I think felt good. And then the other one is just the learning loop. By trying to do lots of small things, I got exposed to like, okay, this team is really good, you know, or this part of the code has a lot of tech debt, or hey, we shipped that and it was actually kind of bad. How how come that design got out? Like where, you know? And so you, whereas if the project had been some six month thing, I'm not sure my learning would have been quite as quick about the company. I mean, there's still things I missed and mistakes I made for sure, but that was part of how I think, uh, you know, and I, you know, no one knows counterfactually what a, whether that made a big difference or not, but I do think that earned some trust 